Hi there guys, this is Simon from MyV Audio. This video is a part of a series of tutorials I'll be doing on contact scripting, where I'll be sharing a little bit of what I've learned in making all of these IV Audio libraries. So today what we're going to be doing is one of these knobs here. So as you can see, these knobs have a label next to them. When we move the knob, the label updates with the value of that control. And when we let go of the knob, there's a slight pause before resetting to displaying the control name. That's what I'm going to be showing you today. So let's make a new instrument. Here's the script that I'm using, which is what's running in all of the latest IV Audio libraries. Just paste that in, and here we go. We have a label, and we have a slider. When we move this slider, the label updates with a value. I just used 0 to 127 and dB arbitrarily. It's not actually affecting anything right now. When we let go of the control, slight pause, and then it resets to displaying the name of the control. So how do we do this? Well, here's the script I'm using, and I'll just talk you through what each part does. Make perf view uh, simply enables this performance view here, and set UI height sets how high this is. Big surprise. So you should be familiar with this already if you've done any contact programming whatsoever. Here we declare a couple variables. We have a timer variable, which has to be initialized to zero. If this variable does not get initialized to zero, you're going to run into some problems. We have a constant, which is UI wait time, and this determines how long it takes after we let go of the control for the label to reset to its value. So if I bring this down, this will switch over faster. Right now, it's set to 1.5 seconds. This is the time in microseconds. Here we'll declare our UI elements. We have a knob with a range from 0 to 127, and we have a label with size 1 and 1 in the x and y direction. We're going to set the text on the label to be label. We can make this anything we wanted. And that's the end of our on-initialization callback. Now we have, uh, this actually doesn't need to be indented. Now we have our on UI control knob. So this section of code executes every time you move this knob. Right now it looks like a slider, but you would skin the slider so that it looks like a knob, obviously. So the first thing we're going to do is increment the timer by one. Then we're going to set the text of this label to the current value of the knob. And we're going to add, we're going to append DB to the end of that. There you can see we have a space and then DB. This is where you would update your engine parameters. So if this was actually updating volume, I would do something like set engine par, uh, engine par volume and all of that. Uh, then we're going to wait our wait time and then decrement, I don't even know how to pronounce that, the timer. Then we'll check if the timer equals zero. If it does equal zero, we'll set the text back to label. And that's it. It's very simple, but it's a little more finicky than you think. Now, here's what I first tried that actually doesn't work at all. And I'll show you what happens if you run this code instead. It looks very similar. We have a label, we have a slider. If I move the slider, the value updates. But after 1.5 seconds, uh-oh, it's resetting to label, even though I still want it to be displaying the current value. Now, why is that? Here, instead of using the timer or anything fancy, all I've done is set the text, set our engine parameters. We can actually delete that since it's not doing anything right now. Then we'll wait the UI wait time and then set the text. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that as soon as I move this control, this wait command is going to get executed and then it's going to set the text regardless of what else is going on. So even though I'm still moving this control, that first wait command has expired and it's setting the text. Every single time I move this, it's generating a new wait command, and every time it's going to be setting the text. So how do we deal with that with a timer? So with this version of the code, uh, if you were to picture it sort of in pseudocode, you can imagine that as I'm moving this control around, the timer is going up and up and up, because every time that control gets moved a tiny bit, it triggers a new callback of all of this code. So as I move that, the timer goes up and up, uh, the text gets updated with the current value, and then it's waiting. But instead of setting the text as soon as it's done, it's going to only reduce the timer and set the text only if that timer's all the way back down to zero, which means we have not touched that control for at least 1.5 seconds. 
So one last note is that when you're doing this with a single knob, it works well to have just one variable for the timer. The problem is, if we take a look at Claire's solo, you see we have a lot of knobs. We have like 12 knobs that all need individual timers to keep track of how long it's been since we touched that knob. So if we have a look at the Claire solo script, which I will bring up here, I believe this is the final version. If we take a look at the timer variable, you see this is basically copy-paste coding. It's the same general idea repeated every time. But instead of using just one variable, we're actually using an array. So the first control uses uh, the first element in the timer array. Next one uses the second element in the timer array. And that's just an easier way of keeping track of your variables. That way, instead of needing to declare you know, 12 individual timer variables, I can just use a single array and address a particular element in that array. So I hope this tutorial has been somewhat useful. If you like these, you know, drop me a comment below. Let me know what else you'd like to see if you have any specific questions. Uh, I'm not a fantastic contact programmer by any means, but I do my best to share what I've learned and just hoping it makes life a little bit easier for a couple of you out there. So just as a side note, you can download all of my libraries for free at ivyaudio.com. As always, I hope you enjoy using the libraries. And thanks for watching.